I'm super excited to share a few uh, aspects of this tutorial with you. First off, we're going to be transforming two of the exact same IKEA dressers. And I am honored to work alongside with Daniel, who has also shared some of his process of his transformation. And I've stitched these together with this tutorial. And it's a true and an absolute amazing honor that we have the inventor, creator, and color expert, Annie Salone herself, who was able to pitch in a few ideas and even source us to a color palette to make this challenge even that much more exciting for us. And let's hear what she had to say. Hi, Christina and Daniel. Here are the colors for your IKEA painting challenge. You have to use old violet, you have to use olive, and you have to use Emperor's Silk, those three colours, plus any other colours you like, I imagine some white, um, any way you like. You also have to use one of the three waxes that I have, either the white, the black, or the dark. Um, you can use detail brushes, you can use uh, stencils, you can use anything you like, freehand painting, textured, uh, flat, even, whatever you like. The main thing is the colours. To help you, I've also included for you um, a drawing or a painting rather by Winifred Nicholson, a British painter that I particularly like from the beginning of the 20th century. So have a look at that and have a look at the whole sort of way it all works um, with her painting and the pictures that I gave you. Well, good luck to, to you. I know you're going to do absolutely brilliantly. Can't wait. I wanted to share the exact images that Annie Salone had sent to us as part of not only just the color palette, but the inspiration to this uh, IKEA collaboration. And don't forget to stay to the end. We have a few extra tips and tricks, as well as you can see the full turnaround from beginning to end. Hello everyone, this is uh, Daniel from Other Man's Treasure, and right behind me, is two boxes of IKEA parts that I need to put together for this challenge that uh, I decided to take with uh, Christina. Okay, so I just opened one of the boxes. Do you see this? It doesn't tell you how many of those you're supposed to have in the package or in the box. This is what I got. I don't know, 20 of them. So I have no idea if those are the ones that are supposed to go in here. And by the way, I had those upside down. I just figured that out. Oh my God, I don't know. This is gonna take longer than I expected. 30 minutes took me to, first of all, open the box, then realize that I have opened the wrong one. Now I'm stuck with uh, the first stitch. No, not sure. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and screw those scenes and pray. See? Ah! Look at this. What am I supposed to do with this? What? Why don't you come in little box and little things so you don't have to look for the right one? amongst all this oh my god ikea so this is gonna be a long night i think oh my god i hope i did not screw that up oh step number six sorry five says currently it has been an hour and 10 minutes and i've done five steps oh my god there's 31. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's Frank. He's having fun. I'm glad that someone is. Um, I got to somehow manage to put that on the other piece by myself. So that's, that's wine. Yeah, I had to have that. Number seven. And I gotta put those there. Ay, ay, ay. That's all I have to say. 
sanity. I'm gonna look at my hair. Oh my God. No. Oh my God. What did I put myself through? I was singing victory and then uh, realized that. Oh my God. Now I have to take it all apart. We're hour number two. The worst nightmare has become true. Where they are. Oh God. It's not supposed to go there. I cheated a little bit though. I bribed my husband with a really amazing dinner and some really expensive wine to put this together. Because I was going to have a little tantrum trying to do it myself. <laughs> I don't think Daniel had that luxury. <laughs> So now that we both have our IKEA pieces safely put together, and poor Daniel has had a little bit of a struggle there, but uh, with all good humor, it turned out well. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with my base coat here using some of the uh, Annie Salone Olive. Love this color. And what I'd like to do is add just a little bit of a hue of some French linen uh, towards the middle and top there, um, just to give a little bit of a different color tone to the olive, kind of softening it a little bit. And I'm also gonna add in just a little bit of some graphite there, just to the very bottom. And I'm just going to continue on blending. And because this is raw wood, going to need a lot of water to blend with. So let's see how Daniel started off with his project. Here is uh, Mr. Ikea dresser that really, really um, challenged my patience. And here are the colors chosen by Annie Sloan to do to use the main colors of this project. So for the first part of this transformation, I am going to use old violet and a touch of uh, old white, uh, my spray bottle and Annie Sloan's brush and mix mat so I can uh, play around with uh, mixing the two colors together and that's gonna go uh, I'm thinking from the top down I'm thinking that from the bottom up I will be using Chateau Grey to start with and see where that goes I decided to change up a little bit and I as you can see using the two colors all violet and all white in the same brush but I'm using now water to get it really wet and uh, mostly do like a stain uh, look on the wood and uh, make the paint go um, very smooth and, uh, and see how it goes so basically I put my brush in the water and then just smooth it out. Make it really nice and smooth and let the two colors blend together. Perfect. So as I've mentioned, this is a pure raw wood. There is absolutely nothing on this wood and it's actually quite dry so it's really soaking up the paint very well so having water is pretty critical for this particular piece. I am continuing on with this blending and adding in my coats and I'm actually just going with more of the French linen for this uh, first and second drawer here but I'm going to add in that little bit of olive to the sides and I again I'm just trying to pick my color codes where I want them to go so this is the perfect time when you first get started painting any project and I'm definitely going to be adding a lot more color and color hues to this project but I definitely just want to get a nice strong base coat going and just keep playing with the different color shades and let's go over to the part two of where Daniel's at with his project and see what he's doing the second half is going to have um, Chateau Grey which is a very lovely almost pastel like green the same the same brush, uh, 
uh, and also water. And at this time, I'm not gonna mix it with white, it's just going to be straight on Chateau Gray. So this is, uh, so far, that is my sketch. Those are the two colors that uh, she wanted us to use, so. That house is going to be in Emperor Silk. So I need to let that dry. And All right, so here's where we stand now. Uh, my uh, French uh, chateau or farmhouse is coming along. I have to let it dry and then I will continue, so. So this is where we are now. Uh, I um, decided to go and do a little bit of uh, create some uh, dimension in the, the trees around the little farmhouse or church. I don't know what, what it's going to turn out to be um, by using um, graphite. So how I do it is I just put, a, I, I used uh, Annie Sloan's uh, detail, detail brush and uh, I just uh, add a little tiny bit of uh, graphite, take the excess off on, uh, on the lid and then just kind of uh, go around and stipple. Stipple, 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 stipple. Where I think um, all these branches are going to go, and you know, there's like shadows and um, inside those trees. So we need to create that. Blend, 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 blend the graphite with the. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention that uh, my my brush was wet, so it will blend easier. It just create this illusion that the the light is coming through um, the branches and and the and uh, we get to see a little bit of uh, the green of the leaves, but still some uh, shadows inside. So here's a quick aerial of how I've got my colors sort of going as a base coat and I definitely feeling like I need to add something so I've decided to go ahead and use this IOD mold that you can get and all of the information will be in the description box below and I'm just picking out a border frame that you can do and it looks like there's about four or five on this um, mold so I am taking this air um, molding clay and I'm literally just pressing it and um, I'm just showing you a quick sample of what uh, how it works. Um, I do recommend that you have something um, firm to roll them down and make them nice and flat but I just wanted to give you a quick demo on how easy it is. So I've gone ahead and made um, enough based on the measurements I have and I'm going to use this no more nails to go ahead and glue this down and I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. So let's see where Daniel's at. Again, just the tiniest bit of, uh, of graphite. Offload uh, on the lid or uh, on a plate or whatever you have. And then just, just go and create depth. Um, what we're going to do then next is come back with the olive and uh, put some highlights. Some highlights. And for that, we're going to use uh, Chateau Grey, which is, uh, as I, I think I mentioned it before, is very similar to olive in tone. So uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, just add a little bit on the thing on my brush and upload on a piece of uh, cardboard or whatever, and then just add some highlights where I feel 
light will be coming through all those beautiful leaves we'll continue doing like that so this is the close-up still working on my ikea project uh, there were a few issues that i was not very happy with and i for example over here if you remember there was like way too many trees so i made the mountain a little bigger and reduced the 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 trees and I'm gonna do the same here. It just makes no sense. Uh, when I when I look at it, it just doesn't look right. Same with uh, the house here. It's just too too big. So I'm gonna fix that as well. It just seems empty. Um, this is going to be like a lake or a pond or something. So I'm thinking that I'm going to draw something to come like from down here to there, like maybe a patch of flowers or something. But uh, right now, this is bothering me. Uh, I don't like it. So I will fix it as well as uh, the farmhouse. So I think that's going to come right down to there. Um, and I'll, I'll put something here. Yes, we'll see. All right, so I fixed it. Um, Still a little blotchy, and uh, I put a cloud there, but I don't like it, so I'm just gonna remove it. But I think that makes more sense as opposed to have all those trees there. Now, my little farmhouse, I'm gonna make it smaller, and um, I'm going to be using an slow and detail brush. Okay, so here's a close-up. I fixed the top. I added a second mountain. Um, that uh, white over there is not finished. I still have to fix that. But uh, I'm actually now liking it. Like I like the how the house looks. I added the, um, the little windows and the door. So very important rule with blending. I always highly recommend, even with your base coat, is to let everything completely dry before you go and get started. Because what happens is, is your original blend is just going to smear and you might even go right down to that raw wood again. So I always find it runs a little bit smoother if I let every step I do completely dry. So all I'm doing is um, going with my original color code and just adding some mild changes here and there, but figuring out how I want my shade. My overall look is I want it nice and dark and kind of rustic down towards the bottom and then it just graduates lighter and lighter as if the sun naturally just aged this olive uh, piece together. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep blending and I'm also going to let those IOD molds completely dry as well as go ahead and put some color coat on them. So what I would like to do for the dresser top is go ahead and um, stick with the French linen. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of that olive as well as just a little tiny bit of edged all around the corners of that graphite just to make it a little bit more worn and rustic here just at the corners and edges. And I'm going to go ahead and blend that through and we're going to let that dry and I'm going to do some waxing with it. So let's see where Daniel's at. The last uh, drawer, which I'm adding like another uh, greenery, maybe like a bush area or something. So I am using olive and uh, graphite and uh, this old chipper brush. So what I do is um, I just uh, get a little bit of uh, paint on the tip of the brush and then just stipple and go 
like that. Um, I added some uh, graphite already to where I want the low lights. So if I was going to uh, use more low lights, so I'll just add a little bit of uh, graphite and then just blend it in um, using a water spray, which will make it everything much easier to to blend. So I have like an instant grassy area uh, right under the lake, uh, the entire drawer, and I'll show you how it looks like later. So I've gone ahead and printed off a renaissance kind of feel um, image that I found on Google and I've printed it off my regular printer and I sized it so there's actually four pieces of paper that I've stitched together and glued and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint my IOD uh, molds here and I'm going to continue on with my blending and really want to kind of have that nice smooth transition of colors and I want to work in this um, decoupage is what I'm wanting to kind of put as my feeling and partial to some of the inspiration that I received for this project and I really want to focus with the colors the colors I really want to add as much as I can to focus on those three specific colors So I've decided to go ahead and do something a little bit different and something I've never done before um, with this particular project and I'm going to go and continue off my blending here and I'm going to show you exactly what I did with this decoupage because it was a very faded um, image I really wanted to enhance those colors so I thought I'd be a little bit of a daredevil and see what I could do with our selected color palette and really enhance these um, hand-picked colors that uh, Annie wanted us to use for this so as I say blending is patience patience you must have with this type of blending and you just keep literally just back and forth with your water until you feel your color codes are exactly how you like them there's no right and wrong it's just some patience and most of all you got to have fun once i've completed my blending i'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what i did with the decoupage and i'm pretty happy with where the shading's going so let's head over to daniel but, uh, oh hi maggie hmm. if i don't okay maggie so I think I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I am going to finish working on the sky because right now it looks pretty like a storm is coming. So I'm going to uh, get some more white there, fix the, the mountains, uh, but I'm, I'm happy. So I'm using the Annie Salone Image Medium for decoupage or image transfer, which I've never tried an image transfer, but this is a decoupage. With the um, X-Acto knife that I have there, first step I am going to do is put this um, decoupage medium on the dresser first, and then I'm also going to place it on the back of my um, image. And I'm just using a roller here to make sure I can smooth it out. The trick of what I want to do with this image though is I kind of want to make it look like a really old painting that was originally painted onto this piece. And I'm going to show you step by step what I did here. So using that X-Acto knife, I made sure that there was a little bit of that paper that it could roll um, on the edges of each drawer. And I'm just trying to flatten out my image and it's working really, really nicely. You can use anything that's flat edge. You really smooth it out and you want to apply this image medium um, for a few coats. And um, you're gonna notice that it actually sinks into the paint color, but not to worry. We're gonna go ahead and correct that when we get into the waxing. So I definitely wanted this image to have a few um, pressed in wrinkles to give it some age and I'm going to go ahead and start painting that. So let's head over to Daniel and we'll be right back with what I do next. Alright, so I'm officially done with the painting 
And now it's time for the clear wax. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I did add a few other colors at the end, so I'll show you. So I ended, ended up uh, using a little bit of furl and some uh, hornflower or hornflower, whatever you want to call that. That's uh, a little bit of burgundy, all white, and just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of uh, Louis blue for the clouds. But that's it. So now I'm going to clear wax this. I have to do all the all the pools, and then I think I'm gonna use white wax in the water to give it like that soft look and i'm thinking also a little bit of uh, dark wax around the trees at the bottom here all right so i'll uh, the next time you'll see me all this will be completed <music> So as you can see, I've decided to go ahead with a white color wash and I'm going to put actually over the entire piece and I'm going to do a very, very mild form. And if I feel it needs a little bit more, I'll add a little bit more, but I think just one quick wash over everything just to give it that nice light hue, that kind of aged effect. And I'm actually kind of doing that ragging. So I've got a wet and dry rag and I'm going around and I'm just kind of soaking up the paint wash as well as adding in that little bit of texture, but very, very lightly so it doesn't take away from the colors as well as from the shading that I've done with the blending. I absolutely adore color washing um, to my pieces, and I really felt that having this lighter um, um, color wash to this piece really gave it a much more warmer and kind of a pastel y feel with all these beautiful olive tones as well as that little bit of French linen. And again, I'm just trying to give a little bit more hue and depth within the piece. So again, I'm just using this rag to add in that little bit of texture so I'm not wiping it completely off. This particular color wash is literally probably about 30% paint and 70% water, so it's really mild. You can make yours more concentrated if you'd like at a 50-50 or even more thick. Always play around, never be shy to try different things. It, you'd be surprised what you'll end up creating. So I'm going to go around all the edge of my decoupage with the color wash, but I'm not going to go completely into the center because I really want to focus on some hand painting for the center of that decoupage to focus on the color palette that uh, we're originally working with. Very, very important when doing any type of ragging, sponging, if you're going to do any of that frottage, frottage style with the newspapers or paper uh, textures, make sure your base coat is 100% completely dry, if not dried overnight. I have a little cheat method. I actually have a hot gun and very carefully I will go around and hand dry it with the hot gun. But um, if you only have a hair dryer, sometimes that's not enough and you have to give the piece a few hours with this amount of paint um, that was applied with all of those um, layers of the blending that was originally done. So again, just be careful. It can be dry to the touch, but when you've added a lot of chalk paint, sometimes it does take a little bit longer to try. So definitely be careful before you start any type of wash or ragging. Let's head back over to Daniel and see where he's at. All right, so I changed my mind and um, I decided to use white wax in the sky as well. So, um, I love how it gives that uh, softer look. Just love it. How nice it looks over uh, the old violet. It's gorgeous. It actually gives it that uh, 
almost dry brush looked, which I think helps a lot with the soft look that I'm going for. I'm gonna put it in this area as well, but I think uh, with the color start, I'm going to just put the clear wax and then add some uh, dark. So with some fine detail artist brush that I have, I really want to go around and add some really nice depth with the original colors that um, are proposed for this challenge. So right now, actually, I'm adding in some arls, and I'm going to focus mostly with the um, Old Violet, Emperor Silk, and the Olive. And I really want to give in a nice faded and warm pastel -y vibe, and I'm going to actually paint I would even say almost three quarters of this thing with these colors and give a nice really good dimension to this uh, particular decoupage image. And I'm even using the tip of my finger just to um, help blend in the uh, colors together. So they kind of have that nice warm and um, transitioned style that the original decoupage image had. Because I wanted to create some of those creases within the decoupage, it actually ripped a little bit of the paper. So definitely want to be careful with that, but it's no problem. I knew I wanted to go back and actually paint it. So I'm actually going to mask those out with uh, the paint colors that are originally in this, as well as I really want it to go into the piece. So I'm definitely putting in a lot of detail that's going to go around the decoupage. Now I want to paint those IOD molds and I'm going to use the old violet and I'm going to add in that emperor silk all around the edges of these IOD molds. So I'm super happy with my results of where this is going, but I think I'm definitely going to go back and add even more color to this decoupage. I'm really loving how the transition of colors and really using the color palette that was given is working on this and it's kind of going in the direction I hoped it did. And it's actually very soothing and very fun to do this and you can use any images you want. So I'm adding a little bit of a stencil here on the bottom on this very square bottom uh, panel piece for this and I'm just going to go ahead and add some Chateau Grey, Old Violet and a little bit of Arles. Okay, so I have um finish putting clear wax on the entire thing and now I'm doing some uh, uh, dark wax so I'm using just a, a, a chippy brush that I'm just uh, putting some stuff in it and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of stippling and going round and around and around. To use it uh, as almost like a, like an extra layer of, uh, of paint. So I'm just moving it around and around in circles. It almost looks like a smoky Just to give it an extra dimension and depth. Little, uh, this, the bank of the river of the lake. I really, really, really love how it looks. Look at that. Wow. Lots of uh, texture created with the paint. And this is absolutely beautiful. The dark box really, really brought all these uh, dark colors out into the, the wooden area. So those are like a little forest. And this is just giving it extra dimension i really 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 like it 
I just love it. All right, so this is it. Love it. I am always super inspired by Annie Salone's books, and I love how she does these hand, free hand painted uh, borders on some of her furniture. So I was inspired to do that to the sides of this piece with the emperor silk. I was a bit more infinitesimal and wanted to use the tape because I didn't feel that I could do freehand very well. So part of my last few steps here, I am going to go ahead and seal this entire project with clear wax and I'm also going to add in a few hints of some dark wax and I think I'm going to go ahead with those IOD molding that frame I've designed here. I'm actually going to put in some white wax as well. Using the dark and the white or even a black wax is a beautiful way to add um, highlights and lowlights to your pieces, aged, antique or rustic. Annie was super kind to give us a review of this IKEA challenge. So let's head over and hear what she had to say. Hi, so the great reveal, what did Christina and what did Daniel paint on those IKEA pieces using the colors and the inspiration I gave them? Well, I have been amazed. I saw them and I was just absolutely knocked out. They've gone quite different to what I imagined and I think gone out of their comfort zone, which is always a good thing. It's a challenge because we do get used to the same old paints, the same old colours and all the rest of it. And so they've gone and used something different. And I think they've done brilliantly. I'd love to hear what you think, but I'm for one am really impressed. Well done. So, hi, this is uh, Daniel from Other Man's Treasure and that's my project. It was really a fun project to work on and really challenged my creativity by you trying to use uh, the three colors that Annie gave us and also um, try not to find out from Christina what she was doing. So <laughs> anyways, it was fun, uh, uh, a bit frustrating at some point, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm happy with the, the result. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed uh, the process of getting this done. Thank you. This was a super fun project. It was an amazing challenge to have different perspectives and people join in and have a different way of viewing things. And sometimes we need to step out of those boxes and see what we come up with. So it was a really, really amazing uh, collaboration and many thank yous to Daniel for doing this project with me. We kind of came up with the idea together as we bantered back and forth how we wanted to set it up. Thank you so much Daniel for participating in this uh, transformation. I've had so much fun and I really hope we could do it again as well as many thanks and it's just been an honor to um, converse with Annie Salone herself and all of what her and her chalk paint team do is just absolutely incredible and I'm really grateful for that. Thanks so much guys for watching and I can't wait to share some more really fun tutorials with you soon. Take care and we're gonna see you soon. Bye-bye. Here are a few photos of some close-ups of our completed projects and both of us were super, super excited and it was just so much fun. And I really hope that some of you can collaborate and do an IKEA challenge together and it is truly a lot of fun.